Hello, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. I would like to go through the 2019 paper, the Paper 4.1, so the Paper 4, but for Europe, and just let you know exactly what came up, so more of a post-mortem, and then see exactly how good my predictions were. So, without further ado, let's get straight in to this paper. I'm sure this brings back lovely memories. So, our first question here, as you can see, is a percentage question. So standard procedure, finding the original price, so that's dividing by the multiplier. And the last part is actually working the number of weeks out uh, using repeat percentage change, so working backwards in effect. Very standard uh, percentage question. I give that one a tick. That's definitely a one I predicted as a percentage calculation question, often right at the start as well. So question two after that, so let's have a look at this next question. We don't want computer frequency just yet, so there we are. So question two was a transformation question, as you can see. Uh, the only weird thing was using trigonometry to calculate the angle of rotation. I've never seen that before, but the other parts of the question are very standard. The fully Describe fully the single transformation, that's normal, translating, normal, and finding the scale factor is also normal. So mostly I predicted that question, and that will give you seven marks out of the ten if you revise the topics I mentioned. Now question three was kind of odd, so that's definitely one I didn't pre predict, so I'll put a cross there. But it's not too hard to get the marks on it. It's a seven mark question, and all we need to do is draw factor trees essentially, to work out how many factors 360 has and then count the powers, okay, with the formula they give you. So I did not predict this, but it's something you could work out for a majority of the marks, okay, a good three, four marks out of seven. Now, this question was literally exactly as I talked about with the stats. I mentioned two particular things, that was cumulative frequency and histograms, and both of them came up including the estimate of the mean height, which I also mentioned you could use a GDC for. And if we look at the second part of the question, again, you could use the GDC to work out most of the things there in part C. And then we have a histogram with frequency densities. So for me, that's a big tick here and a big tick here. A very typical topic for paper four. Okay, so if we go on to our next part here, now, pie chart specifically, I did not predict, but you should know that from year seven or year eight, really. And you only needed to work out the sector angle, so you didn't actually have to draw it. And then the rest of the question was a probability question for seven marks there. So the probability part I predicted, um, not the pie chart specifically, but you should know that anyway. Question six was in my list, uh, inverse proportion, so inverse proportion to the square root of x, generally not well answered by students, and then using three variables instead. Okay, it's a little twist, but certainly this topic was predicted. Part B, of course, the AA star aspect of the question. Okay, moving on. So question seven was vectors, which was predicted, but they kind of did it in an easier format, which is quite nice. So if we take 2b, for example, well, b itself is just 1 across, sorry, 2 across and 1 up. So 2b will just be continuing in the same direction. So this would be 2b, for example. So actually, as long as you followed the instructions of the question, that was not too bad. And here you have to work backwards to find what the vector was. So an easier vector question, I will still give this a tick because it's easier than we actually thought it would be in the exam. So I was quite happy to see an easy vector question. Question eight here is a classic uh, trigonometry Pythagoras question. Um, I think using half AB sine C as well. And there might be a cosine rule element yet here at the end of the question. So that's two big ticks. Trigonometry and Pythagoras using Sokotoa, but also sine cosine rule. So both were predictive for this paper and they combined it for 12 marks into one question. Now, question nine is one of those uh, questions where it leads into a quadratic. Now, generally, they haven't done a geometric way of doing this. They often use speed, distance, time, or they use uh, some other way leading in. So I did predict it, but not in this format in terms of a geometric uh, problem where you have to work out the area. Very common in Ed Excel, these kind of questions, actually. 
So even if you don't get the quadratic for three marks directly, you can certainly solve it and then just substitute in the values for the length and height. So those parts were definitely predicted. Question 10 was a dream question. It was a function question, lots of marks available. So we've got six, eight, 10, and then 13, 14. And it's a standard question. Substituting in composite function, working with uh, algebraic fractions, inverse, a general composite function. I mean, you've got to be very happy with a question like this. So big tick for both of those. It was predicted as one of the big topics and it came up. Question 11 is that natural GDC question and wasn't particularly tricky. So you had to work out the local maximum, three asymptotes, and then solve the equation using your graph, finding the intersection points. Standard question and a lot of marks on offer here. So that's 14 marks, big tick for that. That was the one topic that was definitely gonna come up. And we have a question very like last year, which is an nth term question. Um, certainly finding the patterns isn't too difficult. If you get really stuck, you can just draw it out if you don't see the pattern straight away. It's worth drawing pattern five at the very least, just to see what's going on. And then a quadratic nth term question, which was also predicted. So big tick for that one there. And that was the end of the paper. So I'd say a vast majority, 90% of that paper was correctly predicted. And I'm very happy. It's my first year of doing the predictions and I think I got it as good as I really could have hoped for. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye for now.